Hello everybody, it's Joe here and welcome back to another episode of Train Simulator Classic. Today we're back on the Glasgow to Dunblane slash Aloha line uh, in the Class 385 which has recently been released. It's been a couple of weeks now since it was released but uh, this has been recorded in advance because I am currently away. Uh, so yeah, this has been recorded a little bit in advance so uh, I'll probably refer to it on multiple occasions has been uh, like released a couple of days ago because it was actually released yesterday uh, so <laughs> at the time of recording this so yeah we're going to be playing one of the scenarios today that comes with the uh, that comes with the route it's a uh, 45 minute uh, scenario today we're going to be driving the 1349 Scott Rail service from uh, Glasgow Queen Street through to Dunblane it's a tight schedule apparently and it's going to call at uh, all stations that's Bishop's Briggs Bishop Briggs, I always think there's more than one. Uh, Lindsay Croy Larbert, Sterling Bridge of Allen, and Dunblane, which is just under 35 miles away. 34 and a half, and a little bit more if you want to be uh, pedantic there. So, yeah, uh, what did I think last time? I don't think this route is terrible. I don't think it's a bad route at all. Uh, I don't think it's particularly great value for money. We've, uh, we've discussed that, but that doesn't mean to say that it's not enjoyable driving the 385. The sounds, as you can probably hear, are absolutely abhorrent. I'm not a lover of the sounds. Um, oh, right. God, doors are shutting before we get the signal. Goodness me. Right, off we go, because we've got a tight timetable to stick to. Full steam ahead. It's probably going to yell at me for my driving style, because uh, obviously you lose points on this if you don't drive in accordance with how it reckons you should. We've got headlights on full. We're losing points, for goodness sake. We've not even made it out of the station and we've lost six points already. Yeah, this this is why I don't really play the career scenarios. Uh, I often find, yeah, it's really quite loud in here. I'm going to have to turn it down when I put the video out or you're not going to be able to hear what I'm saying. For those of you that say good, very rude. Very rude indeed. I don't know. Right, let's have a bit more, a bit more acceleration there. red flash inside there right up to uh, up to full speed that sounded a little bit like uh, some of the calf units you see rumbling around the northeast of England and, uh, and north not northeast northwest we'll go with northwest there's more uh, electric calf units there certainly sounds unusual in the tunnel doesn't it yeah I can't help but think that in the in the actual driving compartment, it would be a lot quieter. There'd be the, the gentle hum of the air conditioning, sort of whirring in the background, that it wouldn't be this loud. I mean, it sounds like we've got a window open, doesn't it? And and that's not the case at all. So uh, right, flying up here now. Yeah, it's it's not a bad route. I I think the route's all right, to be honest with you. I don't get as excited about the route. As, uh, as as like I did with the South Wales uh, mainline modern. I think that's arguably a lot better. Uh, I think if this route had been released, somebody actually summed it up, and I can't take credit for, uh, for saying this, somebody summed it up online. If this route had been released in its current state in 2015, which, I mean, at time of recording is eight years ago, but if someone had, you know, if this route had been recorded many years ago, recorded, no, idiot, uh, built, released, that's what I'm looking for, uh, many years ago, then obviously we would think it was absolutely fantastic. It sort of gives me um, Glasgow Airport Rail Link vibes, maybe that's because of the, the layout of the cabin, in fact, you've got a tiny window to see through, but uh, yeah, it, it sort of gives me those vibes a little bit um, for the modern day, you know, the amount of, uh, the amount that route building has come on in general. Do I think it's it competes with a lot of the other stuff? No, it's got a lot of nice features like the DAS. I, I quite like that. As far as I'm aware, it's the first time we've seen anything like that on train sim, so, so that is nice. Um, but yeah, compared to a lot of the other stuff in terms of routes that have been released, for the for less money, you could actually go over to Alan Thompson Sim and purchase the Chat Moss, which I would say was better value for money. You know, it's it's just one of those, isn't it? Um, but like I say, I don't want you to think that I absolutely hate this route. It's not the case. I just think there's a lot better value for money routes out there. But uh, but hey ho. So we're coming into Bishop Briggs. Bishop Briggs. 
Bishop Briggs. There we go, just the one. What time are we due in? We're due in at 54. Oh, estimated time of arrival, 53 and 14. That'll be because we were speeding earlier. By uh, the, the six points we lost. We're in a four-car unit, aren't we? They seem to just be single sets up and down here, don't they? Pop a bit of minimum braking in. I'm assuming we're going to the end of the platform at Bishop Briggs. Yeah, the, uh, the key bindings are very strange on this as well, because you would imagine that if you pressed S... Train now approaching is Ford and Blaine, that's us. Yeah, so if I press W, if you look at the if you look at this here, we'll open the doors. If I press W, it actually moves it into reverse and S moves it into forward. It's very, very odd. Very, very odd indeed. I like how when you put it in no oh, hang on, there we go. Yeah, so it's it's just taking a little bit of getting used to. There's a lot of very odd key bindings this that they've chosen. Oh, I like that. That'd be good if we could get them both together. Oh, that's a three car. No, great. Excellent. Well, we could potentially get a, a, a photo of that, couldn't we? Oh, nice. Lovely. Right, we'll take that out of gear. Oh, off he goes. Come on, we could actually get a nice picture there. That's, it's not the best. We might use that, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll zoom out from the 8. There we go. I thought the timing was tight. Come on, guard, get them doors shut. Assuming that there is a guard. If there isn't a guard, I should have the, uh, the ability to, to door close. I mean, you don't get a buzz buzz. Like that. So, the, yeah, we should have the ability to use these buttons. It's been a thing on Armstrong Powerhouse releases for, for many years now. I think that they should have perhaps, you know... And if they didn't know how to do it, speak to ATS... Uh, not ATS, uh, AP. There's too many that begin with A, isn't there? Uh, speak to AP. Be like, look, guys, we like this. Can we... Can we... You show us how to do it? I'm sure they would have done. See, I just find, you know, like, compared to the South Wales, uh, that, you know, there's... This is quite lacklustre at the side, you know, It's because I've actually, the, the Great Western video which came out, the part three, which will have come out recently, I can't remember what order I'm going to schedule them in, because I'm away, as I say, hence why it's been pre-recorded, but I have literally just recorded the Great Western uh, route, and now I've come straight into this, and wow, there is a, there's a remarkable difference to say this is 30 quid. I just think it could be so much better. Like I say, it's a new section of track. I enjoy exploring, and to be honest with you, the stations seem quite good. It's it's like the foliage that just sort of seems a bit... It's dated, and it's only just been released yet. It's a dated route. It's, uh, it's one of them, unfortunately. Good that we're getting some nice 100 mile an hour running. There we go, we'll bob it in 40%. Hope that we stop in time. Don't forget to take your belongings with you before leaving the train. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform as you leave the train. I think we might need a bit more braking. There we go. Oh, it's in the red. I don't think we're going to be able to hit the platform at, at this speed and stop. Although, to be fair, it seems to be doing a good job. Yeah, look at that. That was... Yeah, I wasn't panicking. That was completely what was meant to happen. Absolutely what was meant to happen there, people. Look at that. I do like the announcements. I think they're quite a nice touch. 
What time are we due to lens it? 58? God, who said this was a tight timetable? Maybe it gets worse as we go along, but I mean, for for me, this is, this is an okay timetable. Hmm, we shall see. We shall see. This surface is for Dunblane. See, it's it's a shame because I quite like things like that. That's that's quite, you know, it's quite high resolution, isn't it? You know, that's very high resolution. I love it. Look at the ticket machine. Okay, they're a little bit lower, but it, it, it's all bespoke, isn't it? See, that's fantastic. Fast train approaching. Just nip across now. There's no pantograph coming through. That's awesome. I like that. That's clearly an Edinburgh Glasgow service. I wonder if. If it's oh no, it's just service five on the uh, right. Okay, yeah. Are they all? Are they all just service service ten? There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bit of a disappointment that they've not actually named them, so you can see where they've come from and uh, and where they're going to. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious it's going to Glasgow, isn't it? Because you know it's going the other way. But uh, yeah, if it's based on a real life timetable, give it a uh, give it a head code. There we go, full steam ahead. The ETA at Croy creeping down even though we're only doing 30 mile an hour. Goodness me. I wonder, so it says about the four car there, I wonder if it actually knows. Like if I coupled five of these four car units together, would it say 20 car on there? I wonder. Or do you reckon it only goes up to like 12? Because I think in the UK we can only run as a 12 car, can't we? As like a maximum. Right, keep going up to speed. It really does hold its speed quite well, doesn't it? Compared to the diesel Great Western that we were just driving, the diesel uh, 800. It was an 800, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow, this performs so much better. Again, from an actual performance side, coming from drive straight away from driving the 800, which is Armstrong Powerhouse enhanced, uh, to, to driving this one, which is not, it, there really is a massive difference. Uh, in the quality. Now, I don't know if Armstrong Powerhouse are going to enhance this because there's quite a few people that say that uh, that Thompson Interactive are quite uppity about who enhances it. You know, if, if people can enhance their products or they can enhance them but not charge for it, which obviously, uh, if that's the case, Armstrong Powerhouse aren't going to do it. But yeah, but apparently that's the case. Now, I don't know anything about that. That might be the case. It might just be uh, chatter on the internet. But if it is, it means that we're probably not going to see an Armstrong Powerhouse enhancement for the 385, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, you know, it's one of those trains that I think I could really enjoy driving uh, if it was brought up, you know, pottering up and down on this route. Not a care in the world. That that would be quite nice, but yeah, it's. Um, I honestly don't know if we're going to see it. But as well, wasn't it Thompson Interactive that made the 170 and they've, they've enhanced that? So. Maybe it's not all of them, I don't know, but uh, yeah, hopefully that's not the case. And uh, eventually one day we might see an enhancement pack for this. So when you think now with DOO capability uh, of the units, like if you think to the 387, is it 387 I'm thinking of? Yeah, it is the 387, 377 packs where you've got DOO mode, you've got guard mode, you know, you've got all the different modes you can use. And I just think it would be... It would be nice, wouldn't it? Now we'll go. We'll go for a bit of fifty percent and see uh, see what happens there. Coming into Croy. Please 
Please mind the gap between the train and the platform as you leave the train. See, this route's another one, isn't it? Like the, well, not so much this route, but the Edinburgh to Glasgow route, where you think it really has had a, uh, an improvement. Really has had an upgrade. Since the electrification, obviously, before this, this used to be three car 170s. You know, if you remember back to, to how it used to be, it was always three car 170s, wasn't it, on train sim? Whereas, obviously, now, when you see the Edinburgh to Glasgow services, they're eight carriages, seven or eight carriages long. You know, whizzing up and down, fast electric multiple units. Come on, stop, stop, stop. No, oh, we even managed to uh, look at that. Perfect stop. some of that break off a little bit there just so that it's not quite as on as what it uh, what it is this is for Dunblane. right so after croy this is where we branch off isn't it the uh, the line continues to edinburgh and glasgow off to our right whereas we're going to swing a left and uh, and head up towards sterling I mean, I don't want to jinx anything, but touch wood, we seem to be doing quite well with the old points so far, other than losing six, just leaving, uh, just leaving Glasgow. But uh, yeah, we seem to be doing pretty well. So obviously, the Dunblane section of route has the Bridge of Allen and Dunblane on it. Obviously, the Dunblane section of route has Dunblane on it. But uh, yeah, these are new sections of route that we've not driven over. Because if you remember last week's video or the week before, whenever I do release this uh, to you lovely people, but the last video we did on this route, we started at Aloha and, uh, and drove down to uh, down to Glasgow. So obviously we have been over this section of route before, haven't we? Right, so full steam ahead. Three minutes we should be driving at 70, so I reckon that's when we're going to come off, because this is probably... 100 mile an hour all the way through to Edinburgh now, I'd have thought. Like with, with route upgrades, with track upgrades, you know, it, it would make sense. So 70 in three minutes is probably where we're going to be branching off uh, towards Larbert. Just take that back, notch two. Will it hold it at 99.5? I think it will. Okay, maybe a bit more power. Look at that, holding it well. So we're due into Larbert at 14.13. And, uh, oh, estimated time of arrival, 14.12. Lovely. And 51 seconds. So that's actually pretty good. power off there because obviously at 100 you can't see whether it's going to click over to 101 and if it does that we're going to lose points oh we've got the uh, the flashing yellow there oh I don't like those AWS sounds at all <laughs> continue blasting along. I really don't think that this is going to be a red. Oh, well, you need a yellow, don't you? You need a single yellow after this. So, uh, yeah, this is just warning us. So, after this, it should be a single yellow. 
if it is a single yellow, we're going to throw the anchor out the cab window, people, because uh, obviously we're coming up to a red at quite a rate of knots. Oh, it's a single yellow. Right, to you. Oh, it's a green, rightio. So we don't need to panic about that anymore. We'll, uh, we'll carry on racing along. Just make sure we slow down for the 17 time. Oh, it looks like from the old white line here we're going to get quite a gradient down, maybe. After we've come off. Oh, there's another unit coming across there. Give him a wave. No two tone horn on this, unfortunately. I don't even know where the horn button is. Oh, right, it's there. Oh, right, okay, hang on. So if we press, if we press the space bar like that, we we get the noise. But if you you get the little hiss and a low tone. Well, what's the low tone key then? Lord only knows. I don't want to start randomly pressing things in case I accidentally activate the emergency brake or something. But yeah, it does have a high and a low tone, and if you press space, that doesn't move. Very, very odd. Very odd indeed. I, I struggle to understand the logic behind uh, a developer that says, right, these are the conventional train simulator controls. These have been the way, you know, these are the controls we've been using for the past 10 years, even longer than that. I'm gonna change it on my train, I'm gonna make it slightly different. Yeah, I, I just find that a bit odd. It's just bizarre. <laughs> I, I don't get why you'd do that, other than just to confuse people. Right, so 60 in, uh, in that. Right, we'll, we'll have a bit of braking. Just down for the 60. Right, keep it at that. A bit more in the old minimum. Oh, we need to slow down to 50 as well. We're not approaching any uh, any yellow signals or anything, are we? No red signals. It's quite an interesting route, this one, isn't it? Once you once you sort of turn off from the main line, it it seems like you have a, a right little poodle about. You have a right little poodle round here, and then after Larbert, you seem to get up to some quite fast running again, if I remember rightly from when we drove down. This is me not paying any attention to the route on the way down at all. Oh wow, we've caught up loads of time. I thought you said it was a tight timetable. Oh, we're going round to the left again. Oh yeah, because that makes a triangle, doesn't it? I'm with you. Right, up to speed. We can get up to 70 and back down again, can't we? Look at that. Oh, neutral section. There we go, back on again. See, I like, I like the neutral section functionality. That's, that's good. Don't forget to take your belongings with you before leaving the train. Right, a bit of thirty percent. Bit of, uh, bit of forty percent. There we go. Righto, coming into Larbert now. I don't know if it's just that grey concrete bridge, but it seems a bit of a, 
It's a bit of a dingy station, doesn't it, Larbert? Let's have a bit more break. You know we're not going to get stopped at the red arrow. There we go. Right, bit more, bit more, bit more. Oh, no, stop, stop, stop. Oh, we're not going to win any accuracy points there, are we? Oh, we've fallen through the platform, everybody. And indeed the world. Right, okay. Where were we meant to stop? There. Yeah, that, that's not your best stop, is it? But, I mean, to be fair, does it really matter? I can't see that passengers would be up in arms at stopping there rather than slightly, what, two metres further back, if that... Okay, perhaps it's a little bit more than two metres, but you know what I mean. In the grand scheme of things, does it matter? Oh, there's another train coming the other way. Does that mean we get an announcement? Or has she done it? No. She's sorry to announce the service is delayed by two minutes. Goodness me. <laughs> One thing that I would like to see as well is... Um, I think they've neglected to do... They've put the dots on the side and that's lovely, but... This should actually be on a darker vinyl, uh, if memory serves me right. Yeah, I believe that these are all on a vinyl, and you can actually see the dark vinyl on them. It does make them look quite terrible, actually. You know, the, the livery could look really nice otherwise, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that with a lot of AP stuff, you do see that. It would have been nice if they'd have put that on the livery. I think the Trains in World variant does have that as well. makes them look almost like they've been retrofit with them, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's a shame that this doesn't include the detail. The external model, as far as I can tell, is absolutely fine. I'm no expert on them, so perhaps someone that is a bit more of a rivet counter than I am uh, will be able to say what's wrong with it, if anything. Uh, but no, from, from where I stand, it, it looks pretty good. The model inside looks pretty good, to be honest with you. It's, it's just, yeah... Yeah, it's just a shame that the sounds didn't, you know, that could be really, really good there. So it's interesting that if you are late, she does say she's sorry to announce that it's late. I love it. Right, Sterling, seven miles, just over seven miles. Look at that. So we're due into Dunblane in around 15 minutes. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, we nearly speed. We were nearly speeding. I nearly said we nearly speeded it. -ed -ed. No, we were, we were nearly speeding there through me not paying attention. I was too busy looking at our timetable. Uphill, right, come on, bit more power. Right, keep blasting along here. Quite a nice countryside, isn't it? Looking out the window, it's quite nice. Those trees look oddly American, though, it has to be said. Do they do a lot of uh, American routes, Thompson Interactive? Quite nice though, compared to the uh, the Wales South Mainline modern route. Uh, that it does appear that I have all the catenary for this. Well, I'd be hoping so. I mean, I paid, I did pay for this with my own money. 
You know, a lot of people just assume because you're a YouTuber that you get everything for free. It's not the case, people, not the case. I often prefer, and you'll probably see where I'm coming from, or maybe you won't, but I prefer to spend my own money uh, on purchasing products. And I always tell you if I get them for free, but uh, I actually prefer to spend my own money because um, if someone gives you a key for a game, you sort of feel you have to be nice about it. You know, if I gave someone, out of the goodness of my heart, a key to show off on YouTube, and they spent the whole, like, half an hour slandering it, I, I feel a bit miffed. You know what I mean? So I think you feel the sort of obligation to be nice about a product, whereas when you've spent your own money and you are a consumer, I think it's it's easier to be able to be completely honest and give a, a factual opinion, and which, of course, is what you guys come for. You know, you, you don't want me to tell you this is fantastic. You go, oh, right, okay, well, I've I've got uh, 29.99 sat spare in the bank. I'll invest that in uh, in this route. And then when you drive it, it's garbage. What was Joe on about? I think that's why uh, when Train Sim, uh, when Dovetail put, um, put thingies out, like streams and that, and they're just, like, the people driving it are like, wow, this is the best thing ever, you know. Oh, my God, the best route. I find it very mm, very hard to believe and obviously I'm trying to run a channel where people you know people take my my comments and, and think oh that, that's some good consumer advice so uh, yeah I don't mind paying for it myself and, uh, and as I say I did with this one it was worth every penny he says sort of looking a little bit yeah <laughs> he said with a straight face mm. Coming into Sterling now. Sort of reminds me of the approach to Shipley. And I'm not quite sure why. Sterling. Don't forget to take your belongings with you before leaving the train. Please Here we go, bit of faulty. The train and the platform as you leave the train. So obviously oh no 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 no. Oh there we go, nearly. We were nearly speeding there, people. So obviously Stirling's quite a long, uh, a long platform. See, we've got a red arrow, so we've got a, a stop car board to stop at again. We'll see if we can do any better this time than we did at Larbert. Oh, you can hear the Pendolino bogey sounds there from the original S9BL Pendolino. Yeah, for, for the price, that's really, really cheeky of them to do that and not record their own sounds. I, I, yeah, that, that's the sort of thing that disappoints me when, you know, that S9BL Pendolino come out, what, over 10 years ago? You know it is. Out of gear, bang the doors open. Right, let's uh, let's step out onto the platform and see. Oh, look at that. That's. I mean, I I could say it doesn't get much better than that, but yeah, okay, you could perhaps be a little bit further backward, but no, I'm I'm pleased with that. See, I like this. You've got the bespoke houses out here. This is this is nice. It's very pretty. It's just the bits between that I don't think are that pretty. Should we, uh, should we have a, a screenshot? Have another one just in case. You can never have too many. So, what time were we actually due into Sterling? I didn't look. We're due in at 22. Yeah, this, this tight timetable's absolutely nonsense. I hate to see their definition of a slack timetable. So we're leaving here at 23.
Hey, dig it. Were we not in 385102 last time? Do you reckon this is uh, the scenario creator's favourite unit? I can't remember if we were. I'm intrigued. I'm going to have a look now. I wonder if it says anything anywhere. Like on our uh, on our previous previous uh, video. I don't know if I can. Can I can I see that? Uh, yeah, it was 102 that we drove last time. Oh, it sounds like there's a train coming in. I can hear traction motor whining. Can't see it, but uh, but I can hear it. Oh, there it is, there it is. Right, off we go. They really are quick, aren't they? There it is. If you think like you're looking out of the passenger doors there while we're leaving. Yeah, don't hang about. Right, up to uh, up to 40 mile an hour. Just take a bit of a uh, bit of throttle off there because we don't want to speed. Oh, what's that bus over there? Is that? Uh... Oh, it's a coach. It's a it's a Cetra coach. No, it's not. It's a Scania. Scania Touring. Right, so we've got the line uh, round to the, uh, that, I think that's the, is that the lower branch that we were on before? Oh wow, look at that. Right, I want a picture. That could be our, uh, our picture, look at that, right. I'm sure, did I not take a picture before when we, uh, when we came over here? On the other video, we probably did. Oh, but what's best? I like that. Right, get rid of... Oh, no, we can't get rid of that. Never mind, we'll, we'll screenshot that anyway. Right. So, we've left the line to a lower now, I think. We're on uh, a new section of route. Should we, uh, should we just consult the electric map? Yeah, there we go. So, the lower line has gone round to the right. We're now off up to Dunblane. So, we've not explored this before. This is new. Alright, if you're watching this on YouTube, you've probably watched other people's videos of this, so this probably won't be new to you, but I can hand on heart say this is the first time I have driven up this section of track. And it's exciting. It is exciting. Bit of 50% power there. Yeah, the level crossing sounds there off West Coast mainline over Shap. Unmistakable sounds. Uh, there's a video that I did quite a while ago. Yeah, if you remember one of the first videos I did was a Pendolino going from uh, Preston to Carlisle on the West Coast mainline over Shap, and that had the exact same sounds in. And the same Pendolino bogey sounds. It's embarrassing sometimes. See, there's no, like, you look at the side here, there's no, there's no, like, sort of boundary fence, you know, there's all these little things that just, alright, it's nothing major, but without the, the minor things, it just doesn't bring it to life as much. You know, there should be a boundary fence, there should be maybe a bit of litter in the side, in the, in the cess. It'd just be nicer, wouldn't it? Right, where are we coming in here? 14.26. Oh no, hang on, right, we'll speed up a bit. All of a sudden the timetable has gone tight. That's not okay. There we go, we'll have a little bit of braking coming into the Bridge of Allen. I, I hate to sort of jump to conclusions, but I'm not seeing a bridge. Perhaps we'll have to... Uh, We'll have to jump out and have a little look around here. Right, that's it. Get it on 70% braking. I know we're not going to stop at the stop board, but I've got a timetable to stick to. Right, hang on. Right, the doors are open. Is that the Bridge of Allen? I think that's perhaps a... Uh, hmm. Is that it? That's not a bridge. There appears to be no bridge. Apart from that. Is that enough to get a station named after you? 
Probably not. It's, if the town's called Bridge of Allen. Like, well, th there should be a bridge. I'm not happy with this lack of bridge. I tell ya. Right, back in the front. Right, off we go. Have I just opened the doors again? Why are the doors open? Why did that happen? I didn't click door open. I didn't press T. If I lose points now... Can we... Oh, hang on. Falkirk Grahamston? Why has the destination changed? I don't remember asking it to do that. Yeah, can we, can we get them shut? There we go. Right. Right, full steam ahead. I've got time to catch up here. So we're due in at 30. No, no, look at the estimated time of arrival at the bottom. Not good. We'll have to drive as efficiently as I possibly can here to try and make up the time. Oh, the ballast changes colour here. Randomly. Now, we don't want to overspeed either, do we? Class 80X. Oh, do they come up here? They must do. Hopefully we don't set off any overspeed indicators today. Flying into Dunblane, trying to keep time. Right, so we've got a red uh, signal coming up. We've got a yellow there. Is that a single yellow? It is a single yellow. Right, okay. We will soon arrive at Dumbling, which is the last station on this route. Right, we've got a red, so we'll, uh, we'll get a bit of breaking in. We hope you have enjoyed your journey and thank you for traveling this country. Right, I wonder if, uh... Oh, for goodness sake. Contact the signal. Oh, there was no overspeeding at all. Excellent. Right, we've lost a lot of points there. Right, so what we need to do is we need to put it in... St hang on, what is it? It says put it in notch 2 in the instructions. There is no notch 2. I mean, I can put it in notch 2 power, but that doesn't seem to doesn't seem to do anything. Right, so we need to sit for 60 seconds. It's not going to do an awful lot for uh, for our um, timekeeping. So this is going to give us the two blobs. We're going into platform three. Which is there. Why did we need to pass the signal at danger? Hmm. I wonder what happens after Dunblane, like where where does the route carry on to? Portal Perth. Oh yeah, so this will probably this will be where the HST seven cities that we were on went through, possibly. Have we uh, have we got the brakes off yet? Nope. Oh we have, right, into forward, off we go. Right. For oh drive quality. Why are we losing points for drive quality? There's nothing wrong with the drive quality there. Absolutely nothing wrong at all. This TPWS grid's going to go off, is it? No. Pleasantly surprised. How generous of it. Oh, that train's leaving now. Oh, I can't believe we're a minute late. Now we're going to lose points and we're not going to get a gold medal, for goodness sake. Fallen at the last hurdle again. Oh, dear. The, uh, the continuous traction motor sound there, even when coasting, just finishing off the video. Oh, that is absolutely infuriating. Right, well, thank you so much for watching today. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you thought. 
Uh, as I say, if you do want to go and check this route out, if I have convinced you that it's fantastic, I don't know quite how I'd have done that, but if I have done that, uh, do go and check out in the uh, in the description. There's a link where you can purchase it. £29.99. Uh, if you haven't already, do consider subscribing so that you never miss out on any future Train Simulator Classic episodes. And other than that, as I say, thank you so, so much for watching. And hopefully, I'll, uh, I'll see you all next time. Cheerio! Goodbye for now.